Okay, today I'm going to be showing you my 1,400 milliwatt laser lightsaber. And I'm going to be talking about if it's possible to make a real life lightsaber. This thing is so strong, you can see the beam coming out of it in just regular air. So cool. Look at that. So this laser is awesome. I'll put a link where I got it in the description. So although this looks like a toy, it looks like a toy lightsaber or something, this is an extremely dangerous laser if you get it. If you were to shine this in your eye, you'd be immediately blinded. Any use of this laser, you must use protective eyewear and never shine it near your eyes or anybody's eyes. This laser basically burns anything it comes into contact with. <laughs> you can light matches with it. It can even cut through things, especially if they're black, because it absorbs more light. See, look how it just cut into this. Awesome. But the question is, could you actually use a laser to make a true lightsaber? Well, the one difference you'll notice between a laser and a lightsaber in Star Wars is that a laser just shoots out forever and goes forever into space. But a lightsaber has a finite distance. So you would need something to contain the light so that it would look more like this. So what this does is first it makes it look freaking awesome. The second thing it does is it disperses the light so that it's not only shooting in one direction, but it's hitting tiny little air bubbles in this plastic here. And so instead of the laser light just shooting off in one direction, it's hitting those tiny little air bubbles and getting refracted a little bit so that some of it shoots off in different direction and some of it goes into your eyes. And so you can actually see the beam and actually direct the beam. Well, the most powerful laser on Earth is the confinement beam at the National Ignition Facility, which is a fusion research laboratory. It's an ultraviolet laser with an output of 500 terawatts. That's 10 to the 12 watts. That amount of power could vaporize 25,000 kilograms per second of rock. But that laser is only able to put out that much energy in short little spurts that last just in the nanoseconds. But even in that short nanosecond, it puts out enough energy equivalent to about a quarter cup of gasoline, which is crazy. But the problem with that system, if we had it in a system like this that shot light out in all directions, is basically it would just vaporize anything around it, including the person that's holding it. So that wouldn't work out very well for a lightsaber. So in order to make a true lightsaber, you would need something that's able to contain the light to just within this beam area here and not fly outside of it. But is that really possible? Well, it's actually not as far-fetched as you think. Recently, researchers at Harvard and MIT stumbled upon something that they called a photonic molecule. So normally, photons are completely massless, but they found a state that they can be in where they seem like they have mass. Basically, using some quantum interactions, they're able to get two photons to interact with each other. And that's pretty cool because normally, photons don't interact at all. For example, I can turn on my laser here and shine a flashlight across it. And even though there's an extreme amount of photons coming out of the laser and I'm shining my flashlight across that beam, none of the photons will actually ever interact with each other. That's because photons can only interact with something that has an electric charge, like an electron. They can't interact with each other. But scientists were able to get these photons to interact with each other by using something called a Rydberg blockade. So here's what they did in order to get this to work. Basically, they made some atoms. These were rubidium atoms. And they made these atoms such that they have a radius that's extremely large. So the electrons on the outside are extremely far from the center of it. And so they shoot two photons in at the same time. And basically what happens is, one of the photons will interact with the first atom that it hits, and it'll basically knock up the electron to a higher energy state. But the second photon can't interact with any neighboring atom because the electron orbital from the one excited atom is overlapping this atom. And there's a rule that says there can't be two electrons in the same space at the same time in the same state. 
and so it's forbidden in quantum mechanics. So basically this photon has to wait for this excited atom to decay back down to its original state before it can excite this atom. And so basically it keeps these photons in a pair together such that they have to move through the material at the same time and then they exit together. So basically these two incoming photons kind of push and pull each other through the medium and then they exit together. And so by using the Rydberg blockade or by using Rydberg atoms, you're able to keep photons contained and you're able to make them as though they have some mass or act like molecules that stick together. And this type of technology will eventually be used in quantum computing, but the researchers that have been working on this have said that it could likely build a 3D structure of these photonic molecules. So basically using these Rydberg atoms as a medium, we would be able to construct photonic molecules in a 3D structure. But the problem with this setup is in order to keep these atoms as Rydberg atoms, you have to hit them with lasers and cool them to almost absolute zero and keep them that way. But hey, maybe Jedi's have figured out a way to make Rydberg atoms using only the force. And that's how they contain the light in their lightsabers. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. So we're not quite to the technology of lightsabers, but I think we're gonna get there in the future, especially if the force is with you. But if you're not subscribed yet, remember to hit that subscribe button. And if you have any comments or questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section. I'll try to get to them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.